Hello, Steel Friends. Today I wanted to go over with you another example. Uh, we're going to look at, in this example, a double angle member. So that's a 2L, 8 by 4 by a half. So you see here we have that labeled. Uh, long legs back to back, so that means the 8 inch leg is going to be uh, in the vertical direction here. And uh, we have the connection, we have the bolt pattern. It looks like a staggered bolt pattern. Uh, we're giving information about the steel, uh, what kind of bolts and the kind of holes. And we want to come up with the design, uh, the design tension strength for this member uh, and for the gusset plate connection. We're going to consider all the tension member limit states. So that is going to be yield, fracture, and block shear. We'll note that we will not at this time... Uh, not check our bolt limit states, which we have not discussed in class yet. All right, so this video is going to take us through the yield and fracture part of this design. All right, so as we look at this design, uh, we can first enter our yielding. So hopefully yielding has become uh, relatively a second nature calculation for you. Um, so we come in, our capacity is phi pn. Uh, phi here, our reduction factor is 0 0.90. Uh, we're given that for an angle member, the preferred classification is A36 steel, and that that means Fy is 36 ksi. And we can look up the gross area of the member. Um, for one angle member, the gross area is 5.80 inches squared. And we'll just make a note that that's for one angle. And we have an angle 8 by 4 by a half. All right, and we can find this uh, in AISC table 1-7. All right, so we go through our calculation. Uh, so we run through our calculations for phi pn. So phi pn is now 0 0.90 times 36 ksi times 5.80 inches squared. So phi pn is 188 kips. Then we have to multiply that by two angles. So our total yield strength for this connection, VPN, should be 376 kips. All right, now we move on to our fracture. So again, uh, we'll review how do we do our fracture calculation. Uh, so VPN for fracture is going to be 0.75 times F sub U times AE, where AE is our effective area. And uh, for an A36 steel, F sub U is 58 KSI. And again, we can check out table 2-4 for this information in our manual if you need to look these values up. Uh, and then our effective area is our net area times our U, which is our shear lag reduction factor. All right, so uh, we want to consider possible net sections for fracture. So here we go. We have our picture of our connection. So we want to consider different net sections. So I would say the first net section to consider is the very forward edge of the connection. So you have to imagine all of this load is in the member, and then when we get to that first line of bolts, we could possibly have a fracture right through the member, all the way across the member. Um, so that's going to be path ABC. Uh, so for one angle, we take AN. AN is going to be now 5.80 inches squared, our gross area minus. Now we go through one bolt across the diameter, so 1 times our bolt diameter, or our effective bolt diameter. Here we're given that we have 7 eighths inch diameter bolts, and then we add in our eighth of an inch for the oversize of the hole and the uh, damage. 
that can occur. And then we want to multiply by the thickness. Now we're given that it's an uh, L eight by four by a half. So that means the leg thickness is a half inch. Path ABC goes across no diagonals, so we do not get any help there. And so we total the capacity there, and I have 5.30 inches squared. All right, we probably also want to consider the next failure plane back. So now instead of just cutting straight across, it's possible that it'll go through these two bolts and then travel on a diagonal path from bolt D to bolt B. Um, so I have that labeled as path um, A, B, D, E, or E, D, B, A. And uh, that's going to be now the gross cross-sectional area again. Again, we're going to subtract out 1 times 77 inch. Oops, sorry. We're going to subtract out 2 times that because we have two bolt holes across the width that we're going through. But then we go on one diagonal, and so we put in one S squared over 4G term. So S, again, S is our longitudinal spacing or our stagger. And so this is going to be S. And then our gauge or our transverse spacing is going to be G. So we plug them into our S squared over 4G. So S is 1.5 inches squared over 4 times G, which is 3 inches. And we want to be careful here. We want specifically the G that went from bolt D to B. So that's 3 inches as well. So we're in particular looking for this G. Right, and then we also multiply this by a half an inch. We do our calculations here. Uh, that this totals 4.89 inches squared. So it seems that our net area is going to be limited by path A, B, D, E, and that's going to be 4.89 inches squared. Again, for one angle. All right, so we can use that in our fracture calculation. Now, because these are angle members, we also have to account for shear lag factor. So uh, if we move on to the next page in our notes, uh, we have the shear lag factor, U is one minus X bar over L. So whenever we have shear lag, we wanna consider uh, the different scenarios. So we're gonna check out table D 3.1. And in particular, this is going to be a case two. So we do not have all elements of the cross section connected and we have the center of gravity for the angle member outside of the plane of the connection as we describe it. So here's the plane of the connection. And our center of gravity is offset. So we want to figure out what that distance is. So that distance then becomes the X bar that we wish to use in our equation. All right, so we can go into our table. Um, this value that I have labeled here, X bar being 0 0.854 inches. This also comes out of AISC. This is now in table 1-7. L here is the total length of our connection. So I would probably write this typically as a cursive L. And L is the length of our connection. We go back to the previous, uh, to the actual uh, connection. We see that from here, the first bolt to the last bolt, we have one, two, three, four spaces, four at one and a half. And so this is going to become L. Four times one and a half is going to give us six inches total. And so I will put that as six inches. Or if you want to have in your notes, you can do four times 1.5 inches. So we remember where that calculation came from. All right, doing our calculation for you, you will be... Oops. You will be 1 minus 
X bar, 0.854 inches over the length, 6 inches. We round that to the nearest hundredth. U for this one is 0.86. So this tells us that 86% of the angle cross-section is effective at the connection. Uh, we can do our calculation for our effective area. Our effective area is now our net area times U. Uh, we pull that net area from the previous page. That was 4.89 inches squared. That was our controlling net area times our U factor, 0.86. And that gives us a total effective area of 4.21 inches squared. Again, we're doing this all for one angle. All right, we can run through our calculations. So our final design calculation, we say for fracture, uh, we're going to check that phi. Pn is going to be phi times F sub u times Ae. Our reduction factor is 0 0.75. F sub u, we already said, was 58 KSI for an A36 steel. And our effective area is 4.21 inches squared. So we get phi Pn to be a total of 183 kips. We have to multiply that. Again, let me put this in red. We have to multiply this by two angles. And so our total possible load that this could handle for two angles is going to be 366 kips.